Hello, this is Ron Clark. I'm presenting the second part in my video series on my little book, Love Letter to a Dying World. I'll be talking today about essential meaning and essential form and how they relate to each other and how you can learn to pers directly perceive essential meaning. I have filmed it today in my apartment, so there's no wind. Uh, should make it better on the sound. Uh, still sort of primitive editing, but uh, you know, who knows, that may improve in time. So I hope you enjoy, and will let me know what you think. The I, or as I call it, the singular self, is an individual, uh, a, a being, a single being. Um, it's homogenous. It is a single being. But as you've probably already discovered, it also has all these infinite number of parts to it. it it's like a beach uh, with, uh, you know, as a beach it is one thing, uh, but it also has an infinite number of grains of sand. Uh, so the, the, the singular self is both this homogenous one thing and inclusive of everything that exists in the universe, but it is also the individual things that exist in the universe. Um, I call these, these individual things essential meaning, because each one, each individual piece of the singular self has a specific uh, ratio of essential meaning. It means something. You mean something. I mean something. This rock means something. Everything means something. This is essential meaning. Now, essential meaning is expressed through form. Anytime there is a form, there is essential meaning. Anytime there is essential meaning, there is a form. Uh, every form communicates its essential meaning. It's expressive. Essential meaning is, above all else, expressive of itself. Um, so each individual thing is composed of essential meanings. Uh, I have uh, a certain set of essential meanings that make up my body, my character, etc. And everything has this same attribution of essential meanings. And it's different, slightly different, for everything. That's why everything is unique and different. The direct perception of essential meaning is fairly straightforward and fairly easy. It, it just takes practice. And uh, it's very specific how it's done. Uh, ordinarily, when we perceive a thing, we get the immediate hit of essential meaning, and then we start to think about it, and we start to feel about the thing we have perceived. So it, it, the perception goes from the universal essential meaning to the personal, our thoughts and our feelings. And it's that personalization that we are most aware of, and that we focus on the most, and becomes the, 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 the source of uh, how we really perceive. Um, but the, perceiving the essential meaning uh, is a matter of uh, being sensitive to the perception that is immediate, that occurs before we start thinking about a thing. Now, I'll take you through some exercises that display how this is done. I've laid out before you five objects, five rocks, because they're nondescript and not familiar, things that you immediately start thinking about. Um, so, what we do is we look at these, each one, individual, they're different from one to the other, and when you look at them, try to focus your awareness on that initial feeling. The initial feeling of this rock, 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 and the initial feeling of this rock. Now, you want to focus in um, before you start thinking, oh, this is round, okay? That round has nothing to do with essential meaning. It's just the initial gut feeling that you get from this rock. And same with this one. It's triangular, but we're not thinking triangles. 
we're just thinking about the rock. We're not thinking even, we're just feeling, feeling what this rock presents to us. Same with this one, and this one. And they're enough different that you get a slightly different feeling from this one, to this one, to this one, to this one, to this one. Okay, that's the basic lesson in perceiving uh, essential meaning, directly perceiving the essential meaning. Now, here are five different objects, which uh, have probably some sort of personal relevance to you. you they automatically uh, uh, spur some thoughts, like toilet paper, uh, little toy, uh, bird, uh, this is Ganesh, uh, and a cigarette lighter. But, we can still do the same thing. We just have to be a little more careful in how we approach it. Um, so, you look at the toilet paper, but it's not toilet paper. This is an object, a form. And you look at it and you get an immediate hit, immediate uh, response uh, from this, uh, looking at this. Um, and the same with the bird. But it's not bird. It's simply a form, okay? Same. A form, it gives you a different impression, a different feeling. Form gives you a different feeling. And form, it gives you a different feeling. And you really have to focus in on that feeling and push away all the thoughts, all the feelings about toilet paper, bird, ganache, slider, and little toy. Okay? So that is the basis of uh, uh, directly perceiving the essential meaning. Now, when we start thinking about toilet paper, that is an indirect perception of the essential meaning. Because from the essential meaning, that perception, we start creating associations, that's what the brain does, uh, associations with the idea of toilet paper. Now, that is an indirect perception of essential meaning because the essential meaning is always going to give us a perception that is along certain lines, okay? But they vary from the essential meaning. They expand on the essential meaning. They personalize the essential meaning. Um, but what we're focusing on here is the universal essential meaning of this form and of this form and of this form, of this form, of this form. Um, so, if you practice this, uh, you can extend it to anything you look at. All these things in my room have their own unique essential meaning. And it's, it's wonderful to perceive things in this way. It gives you a lot more information than the usual perception, which is your thoughts and your feelings about the thing. Okay. So what do you do with your perception after your perception, your direct perception of the essential meaning? Because that is a non-thought process. It is a perception that occurs before thinking or feeling begins. So, um, it, it, as a perception, it can be taken just as it is in a very brief uh, perception and not really thought about. Um, but this is very difficult for us to integrate, you know, because we are thinking, feeling creatures. So what, what I suggest is that uh, immediately after the, the direct perception, uh, the, you know, the part of feeling what the uh, object is uh, expressing, um, after that, begin consciously to start thinking about it and to start feeling about it. Um, be careful in that because this is a perception that is impossible to put words to accurately um, so you have to sort of sketch you know impressions of it in words and feelings more so in words than in feelings These feelings are much more automatic uh, than that part of the brain that forms the words um, so take care as you do that, and that way you can integrate those perceptions. You can remember those perceptions and, uh, and let them influence 
uh, how you think, how you, uh, uh, well, how you think, how you treat the, the world. Okay? There you go. Bye-bye.